Okay, so we are at the aquarium in France. Roughly 250 carp inside. The water is very, very clear. Got him. You got him? Yeah. <laughs> you can't be there on the first night. Go on, have a look at this. That is what we've come to France for. Make sure the hook's nice and sharp. Make sure my rigs are nice and neat. <laughs> That's how we do it. It was in there. Yeah. It was in. Look at that. A 44 pound common. We're going to fight, lads. A good fish that it is. Good enough. Whee! Got Gantuan. Did somebody say big carp? Okay, so we are at the aquarium in France, not too far from Calais, just two and a half hours down. And uh, it's a lake that was supposedly supposed to open last year, but due to COVID restrictions, it wasn't the right time to open. And the fish that are in this lake, apparently 250 of them, have been pretty much left untouched. It's about 14 acres in size, roughly 250 carp in size. The water is very, very clear and they've treated it by the looks of it with a little bit of blue dye. I've been told by the owner that there's still a lot of weed in the lake. Um, there's meant to be a, a clear, sort of a clearish bit through the middle of the lake, but the rest of it is very, very weedy. And I've been told that it's a very high chance that the fish that we hook probably will need recovering with the boat. They're gonna end up in the weed. We're gonna need to go out in the boat and get them out. But um, I'm gonna be joined with my good friend, Derek Harrison is coming along a little bit later this evening. And um, again, due to COVID, I haven't fished with him as much as I have in previous years. And uh, I'm excited to spend a nice session in the autumn on a private lake. Normally, you know, in the UK, we're all fighting for swims, trying to get in the best peg, people coming and going. We've got this lake to ourselves for the duration of our session. So things couldn't be, well, more lined up really. They should be pretty keen. They feed the lake with a little bit of a particle, sort of trying to feed them up, keep them uh, in good condition. But other than that, I don't really, I don't know anything else. This time of year, you know, it's getting dark, I think seven o'clock French time. It's now just gone lunchtime. It's sort of one o'clock in the afternoon. And it's going to be a bit of a rush to get the rods out. But I think, you know, at the moment, this is about as bright as it's going to get, um, which forecasts quite a bit of rain. Um, and I think, it, I think I should go out in the boat, just have a quick look. It's a bit intrusive, you know, a quiet lake that's not getting fished like this. But I think I should. I think I should go out in the boat, have a little look, and then make up my mind where I'm going to fish. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's a bit funky, dude, huh? Decided not to go out in the boat. It's quite gloomy. I just don't think I'm going to see the, see the bottom out there. The owner's told me that there's a nice clear spot out here, about 23 rod lengths. And I think for, for the first night, I'm just going to, oh, that's odd, hedge my bets and, and fish from the bank. I think um, I'm better at that anyway. I know what I'm doing. And it's a bit intrusive going out in the boat. Well, it's clear out there. Gravelly. It'll be dark before we know it, so I just want to have a few casts, pick the lines that I could fish on, and then I've got to make my mind up if I'm definitely going to fish this swim or potentially the one next door. But um, this is the one he recommended, and the, the bottom definitely felt right out there. Fucking up. Hello? Have we landed yet? We've had two already, mate. Are you joking? No, yeah, we're joking. Just uh, just got in, more or less. Just got here. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on some gear this morning. 
coming in an hour or two, and I'll, I'll be on my way. <laughs> so I'll probably, I'll probably be back after tea, mate. All right, well, uh, yeah, cool. I'll just check it in and see how you're doing, but um, it's all nice, it's all laid on, you ain't got to panic. Um, part behind your swim, it's all going to be good, mate. You can see all the weed, can you? Well, yes, the water's clear, um, and it's got sort of, there's like this algae sort of weed, it's like a duvet, like it, it's not like weed that you see very often, it looks more like a duvet than a, than a weed bed, you know? Yeah, I just put, I put 35 pound uh, lead on anyway. 35 pounds? I put, yeah. You're going tarpon fishing, lad. Pardon? You're going tarpon yeah, well, fishing. We don't want to get out of the weed, don't we? We don't want to lose it on weed, I took 18 pounds off. I had 18 pounds uh, uh, blue recover on, I thought, fuck that. <laughs> All right then, lads. Well, um, yeah, get about. Well, come down and see us when you get here. I will. I'll get you a ring when I get you there. Then you go up get it, can't Yeah. yeah. You'll catch them all, eh? While we get there, eh? Yeah, I'll, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get them all on the bait, lads. They'll be all on me. No, I'll be anyway. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye. Catch you soon. Right, I'm going to uh, bait up with the bait boat, but cast my rigs. I want my bait really, really tight. I'm rushing against the light. I could take the big boat out to bait up, but if I get this boat clipped up to the spot, I can top up after it takes, which, um, yeah, here we go, it's on the clip. Um, it's a lot less obtrusive, you know, if you just want to top up, but you can send the bait boat out full to, full to the gunnels, hardly any disturbance compared to either swimming or using the boat. Can we get the clip right? Right, onto the uh, final rod. Um, the middle rod, I've gone four pints of caster, four scoops of hemp, and one scoop of maize. The right hand rod has got one scoop of hemp, one scoop of maize, one scoop of 10 mil essential cell. And again, that's what's gonna go over this, the left hand rod. So I've got, I didn't wanna put casters on all three just in case it, it turns into a roach party or something like that. Um, so I've focused them in the center of the, the swim as such on the, the cleanest, biggest spot. And with, with regard to rigs, I'm gonna fish pop-ups on all three because I put, that's quite a lot of bait. I'm thinking these fish are going to be a little green, you know, not, they shouldn't be too paranoid of pop-ups. And I always think when you fish pop-ups over small items of bait like that, the little fish come in pecking around, feeding close to the bottom, and then when the big greedy ones turn up, straight down on the old hinge stiff rig, classic big fish tactic. So that's what I'm going to do. Three pop-ups out there. Might, I might mess around with the colours. I haven't decided yet, but by baiting up with the bait boat, I'm keeping the feed really tight um, so i've got three different spots all gravel spots all clean um, but the middle one is the the biggest the biggest clearest bit but this saves spawning i hate spawning it's a right pain in the backside. and uh three dumps of the bait boat can't beat it oh. Well, I literally do not know where today has gone. It feels like five minutes ago that my alarm clock went off. I was driving down the A12 en route to the Euro Tunnel. Um, it was only a short drive once we got to France, you know, two and a half hours. Um, and the time it's took me to plumb, bait up and get the rods out, it's now just falling dark. It's, it's five o'clock in the evening and just goes to show this time of year, the days are very, very short. I'm not sure whether to be confident or not obviously we've got a few nights ahead of us but 
I've not seen any fish, which is always a worry, but at the same time, the lake's pretty weedy. The owner tells me that this is one of the better swims. The big, there's a big clear spot out in the middle that really does feel like it's been fed on. So I certainly aren't, I'm not thinking I should be somewhere else at the minute, but it is worrying that I've not seen any carp. You know, I do like to see them before I start, or at least have an inkling, uh, you know, know, have, know a little bit more, but that's the nature of coming to places that you don't know that much. If I've got my location wrong and I don't catch anything tonight, Hopefully our Uncle Derek will turn up in the, uh, in the morning, give it a good thrash up next door and send them on to me. Hey, um, Uncle Derek, make sure you do give it a little bomb out for us, eh? But um, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm optimistic, but not confident. There's plenty of time. The old rainbow shining down out there, sort of between my left and middle rods, so you never know. Number one. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what time it is, but I've had a small common already. Second take. Can't be that on the first night. Go have a look at this. Big in the foot, yeah. The belly on it. <laughs> it's really fat. Isn't it? Would you believe it? It's half past eight in the morning in France, and it's just getting light. And um, the left rod went last night. The middle rod went last night, and the only rod that hadn't was the right hand one and it has just busted off this morning with an absolute ripper. And this fish is fighting much, much harder than the other ones. Took a bit of line off me and is really resisting, but I don't know if that's a good sign or not. I'm not gonna pull its head off, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep gaining whenever possible. I've seen the fish hit the top out there. And while, while I'm gaining, I'm gonna pull it away from the zone. So I have to go out there in the boat unnecessarily, you know, don't go over the spot in this clear water. Derek! Where art thou, Derek? What? <laughs> well, that is a good first night, or a good end. First night. Busy, busy. Oh, tench, you make tench, tench that. I don't know about that, mate. <laughs> Derek, can you take that net back up for me, please? Thank you. 
Here's a tiddler. Here's a tiddler. Right, where's that other rod? It's kicking off. Well, not long after catching that small one, I uh, rebaited all three spots with the bait boat. Um, didn't like left the rigs; they were already all cast out there. So I just took the bait boat out just to bait up a mixture of casters, maize, hemp, ten mil boilies, like a right nice little party mix. And um, I haven't done that. I don't know. Maybe an hour and a half, two hours ago, and uh, into another fish. Feels like another smaller one, but you can never be sure. Derek's um, had a little plum around. He's found two nice spots that were marked on the map by the owner, and uh, he's up there pumping his boat up. He's gonna get his rods out shortly. He's, uh, he's excited, the lad. I was expecting to need the boat for all the takes, but they just, I'm just gently teasing them in, and, um, They've only minimally got stuck from time to time. It seems to be coming in pretty easy. And that's good, because I don't want to be going out in the boat in crystal clear water right over my spots and, and scaring them. You know, like if, if you don't have to go out in the boat, it's always good. What's going on here? Here he comes. That's another little stocky. Uh. Get in there! Come on! Oh, that is what we've come to France for. A 53 pound mirror on the first night. Unbelievable. It was the second bite of the evening. The first one being a lovely 29 pound common. And uh, it's been an amazing morning since as well. I've had a couple more, well, three more takes and uh, all three of my spots are producing. All I've got to do now is keep press and repeat. And hopefully there's more big ones just like this. Oh. <laughs>